So the Cherokee Nation, uh, the Cherokee Native Americans, this is number 14. Number 14, they lived in the foothills and mountains of South Carolina. Generally speaking, the northwestern portion, uh, the northwestern portion of South Carolina was, was the area uh, that for the Cherokee Nation, the Cherokee Native Americans. They called themselves the real people. They called themselves the real people, and they were a very, very powerful nation. They, number 16, they generally lived in small villages, up to as many as 600 people in each village. And they surrounded their village with a palisade. And if you look on, pick on page number 11, there's a good example, 11 in your textbook, there's a good example of a Catawba village that is surrounded by a palisade. All right, so um, that is number 16. Number 17. Their summer homes were open. Their winter homes, however, were round and they had very thick walls. And these thick walls were covered in daub. Daub is another one of your vocabulary words. Daub. And it's basically a mixture of mud and grass that is used to uh, stop the elements from coming in. Number 18. The leaders, they did have uh, definite leaders of the tribes. These leaders included women, and these folks met together in, in, in councils, and they made the rules for the village or for the tribe. Number 19, in the peacetime, the number one leader or the head leader of the village was known as the white leader. Number 20, in wartime, the red leader led the village. All right, each village of the Cherokee also had a holy man or woman, okay? Uh, now, we're going to move on to the Catawba. If we take a look, uh, you can look in page number 11. The Cherokee is on page 12 in your textbook. The Catawba is page 11, and then the Yemisee is page 13 if you want additional information. Um, all right, so the Catawba, number 22. The Catawba called themselves the river people. And the reason they did is because they lived primarily along the rivers in the Piedmont area of South Carolina. Basically, the area we know today is Rock Hill, uh, that, that area where we, where we have the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. Uh, Carowinds would be a good landmark for you guys. There is the Catawba River that runs uh, through that area. All right, number 23. The Catawba were very unique because mostly the men did the farming. The men did the farming, while the women uh, made specific kinds of pottery, etc., using the natural resources that they had there. Um, fish was also a big part of the diet. They lived, obviously, they lived near the river, so they were able to use nets, etc., to catch lots of fish. Number 24, villages, they were surrounded by palisades. That's another of your um, vocabulary words. And again, great illustration of the palisade on page 11. Um, okay, so number 25, the homes for the Catawba were wigwams. And the wigwams were basically, they had a structure of saplings, small trees made up the structure. And then those small trees were covered with bark or grass mats. Number 26, they had council, a council house where the leaders met and made their rules. And 27, these folks were definitely known for their pottery. They live in an area where natural clay is a readily available resource, and they would use this clay to make incredible pottery. Okay, moving on to, number, to uh, the Yemisee in number 28. The Yemisee, again, uh, is on 13 in your textbook. So number 28 in your notes. The Yemisee, these folks were originally from Spanish Florida. They moved to South Carolina up around the Savannah River uh, primarily to escape persecution by the governor of Spanish Florida. 29, in the summer, these folks, they hung out on the beach, they chilled on the beach, they were uh, uh, in wigwams similar to what the Catawba would have lived in, uh, but it would have been covered in palmetto leaves because all the palmetto trees, that's readily available. But then in the fall, the winter, and the spring, they would move from the beach to further inland, and they would live in wattle and daub homes, very much like the Cherokee. 
All right, uh, number 31. One of the things that's interesting about the Yemisi, they live by the sea. Get that Yemisi live by the sea. That's an easy way for you to remember it. Number 31, their diet was very heavy in clams and oysters because they just simply walk through the pluff mud, walk through this tidal creeks and the marshes, and boom, there's clams and oysters. All they got to do is pull them out and eat it. Okay? So it's the original to go. Um, they, 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 their, their diet definitely included a, a lot of seafood or ocean based uh, items. Number 32. The Yemisi, um, they had a council for leadership. Uh, interestingly, this council sometimes included women, and this is how they governed the village or the tribe. So now, guys, I've given you sort of an overview of three tribes as well as the Eastern Woodland Indians and the Cahokia, the Mississippian period. What you need to do now, stop the tape, uh, go back, Look at your notes, pull out your cues, pull out your keywords, pull out all of that information, pull out your questions that you may have. Then you're going to get with a peer, compare your notes, see that everybody, both of you got all the information. Then you're going to summarize each set of notes. So you should have two summaries. The one on the Catawba, the Cherokee, and the Yemisee must be a minimum of three sentences. The one on the Eastern Woodland Indians must be two sentences. Summarize your notes, then bring them to your teacher so that we can take a look at it and make sure that you've gotten all the information you need. Once you have done that, put your notes in your ISN on the page that is going to be opposite of your 3T chart. Then you're going to use this 3T chart and you're going to go through and you are going to collect the vital statistics or the important information and aspect, aspects for each one of these tribes. Then you're going to meet with a peer and you're going to color coordinate it. You're going to pick out the things that were similar. You're going to pick out uh, the things that were similar across all three tribes, things that were similar across two tribes, and then the things that were unique to the tribes, leave it blank. Okay. Now, your quiz is coming up, and I'm, we are going to be building that quiz based on the notes you've just taken, as well as the textbook, okay? So make sure that as you're going through and as you're building, uh, as you're building this 3T chart, you have to look at page 11, 12, and 13 in your textbook. Um, you need to... I'm just looking at my notes here for what I wanted you to do. Make sure you're studying your notes, your vocabulary chart, and your 3T chart for your quiz. I hope you guys have gotten a lot out of this. Please be sure and rewind, etc., as you need to. And have a great day.